Dr. Q&A podcast. The last advice podcast you'll ever need. Dr. Q... Wait, is this Dr. Quinzel? Like Harley Quinn? Maybe. To Jason Todd. Your damaged goods, I know it, you know it. How could I possibly know that, you ask? Because we all are. Living in Gotham is enough to drive anyone a little loopy, and not everyone deals with it like a normal person. Some of us turn ourselves into walking snowmen, some of us dress up like zoo animals, and some of us stay in abusive relationships that rob you of your sense of self and eat away at you until there's not even much self left to recover, leaving you a mere husk of a person by the time you finally muster up the courage to tell them to piss off and start your life over. But I digress. This is definitely Harley. Yeah, it is. 100%. My name is Dr. Hugh Quinzel. And I want to help you with all of this and more. If you've got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out my podcast and click here to submit your questions for a future episode. Until next time, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Weird. Do you want to read this? Greetings, Jason Todd. Here at Wild's Books, we love to keep our supporters up to date on our latest arrivals. If you see anything of interest, feel free to respond to this email or call us any tw- time between... See, you can't read either. Between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. Requests can be held for 72 hours. This week's new arrivals based on your profile. A New Dawn by Jay Nadiger. Careful there. Staff pick. Click to read synopsis. Coming Up for Air, Poetry Collection 2 by Bria Batty. Matters. To Cook, to Soothe by Reese Chan. Message continues. Okay. Dr. Rosemont, Jason, writing to confirm your request to shift our sessions from Thursdays to Tuesdays. Also using this reminder... Do the mindfulness. I think we read that. I thought we already did. Yeah, Yeah. I thought so, but it was marked. I thought as new. I've been thinking a lot about our reputation problem. What with citizens of Gotham running at the very sight of us in the GCPD hating our guts. Mr. Darius, my history teacher, used to say, people fear what they don't understand. I think I've come up with the perfect solution to our PR problem. We start a podcast. No, it's such a dumb idea because like there was more to that. There no. was more to the email. No, it was, it was... Yeah, it was. See? Now, now, let's not be so quick to judge. What exactly are you proposing, Tim? Oh, I thought this was the previous messages. Sorry. No. I haven't gotten quite that far yet. Maybe it's the four of us debunking myths about what we do or debriefing our latest case. We could answer listener questions. We could call it Podcast Nights or Bat Chat. We could workshop the name, but I think this is a good idea. We even already have fun interpersonal dynamics and banter, which is perfect for audio. No. See? We're already doing it. When, whenever you're being a party pooper, I'll just be like, classic Red Hood. People will love it. We could do t-shirts. Why, <laughs> why does every um, single continuity now feel the need to make Tim Drake really campy? I thought it was funny. It's funny, but, like, they've decided to make him, like, really campy and silly. I I know. I liked him more serious, but that was pretty funny. I liked it. Um, I don't think the podcast thing would work out, though, because a lot of times podcasts are, like, live. Um, and you might have the problem of accidentally calling one of them by their real name. Well, you also could record it, but the problem is eventually somebody could track where you're uploading from. That's true, too. Yeah. This is a very important character development moment here. Playing with a ghost, Alfred? You might say that. I'm finishing my last game with Bruce. I couldn't save our board from the manor, but I do have our notes. We tracked each move. To continue the game, if one of us was ever away. Are you winning? Playing as Bruce, I can't see how he loses. Bruce is dead. Maybe he wins your game, but without him, we've lost. I'm not so sure about that. Not so sure he's dead? Not so sure we've lost. Bruce played an important role. But he never saw himself as the only piece in play. I like moody teenager, Tim. 
Yeah, when he's more serious, he's a lot more interesting of a character. Now, that doesn't mean he has to be the edgiest edgelord of all time. I can't stop reading Harley's book. It's a who's who of Gotham's underbelly. Impossible to put down. Don't let her hear you. I should put that quote in the book cover. <laughs> she would, too. I'm beginning to like Harley a little bit more in this game. Um, I have retracted my previous statements of thinking she is absolutely hideous. I think she's okay. She's kind of cute. Please complete your case file objectives. Open Harley's book and analyze her evidence. Okay. I don't think she's nearly as pretty as Arkham Harley or uh, DCAU Harley, though. Harley's profiled some seriously antisocial prisoners here. Look, something's going on at Blackgate. We lean on that warden. We're set. No, these records go back centuries, man. The warden's new. Now she's involved. How did I miss this? Oh, right. Harley's stupid system makes no sense. Babs. Hey, Babs, what did you figure out? <laughs> they all got out on appeal. That's what Harley was tracking. In every case, key witnesses were murdered. Look. They were all pinned up with knives, just like Langstrom. Bruce is onto something. Oh? I think I've got something. Oswald Cobblepot, the penguin. He's like everyone else in here, except he served his sentence every single time he was arrested. Someone must have hung him out to dry. Might be he's willing to talk. He runs the Iceberg Lounge now. Claims he went legit. <laughs> he definitely runs more than liquor through that bar. I wouldn't know. That man would never take me. <laughs> if you wanted a fake ID, Tim, all you had to do was ask. Oswald's dangerous. And we can't forget, Harley's still out there. We have to be careful. <laughs> Relax. Dick. We got this. I think Jason's personality in this game is my favorite right next to Barbara. Mm -hmm. I like Jason a lot. Oh, food. Our food's in the oven. Yes. I have to go get that. But I really liked that cutscene. I thought it was cool. I will make sure not to progress anything. I will just look at the bat cycle or something. Yeah, just sit there and be quiet. Sorry. I'll see if there's dialogue. So, fun fact, according to the warden, Harley wasn't even an inmate. She was just there to hang out. A little R&R, &R. yeah. Well, she's out in Gotham now, so that's great. So, with Robin, I have to do the, the same training things, kind of. Oh, really? Defeat criminals to uncover clues. You see, you have to stop premeditated crimes, defeat many bosses. Do the time strike training. I'm pretty sure Robin is the one with the teleporter that Lucius Fox mentioned, but I think it's kind of weird you get that email and it kind of spoils what everybody else gets. Yeah, it's interesting because like he wasn't just telling us exactly what everyone got, unlike unlike you. You just told us. Sorry? Well like the he he emailed us. Well, I mean it shows on the I the, was just joking. Remember it doesn't show, matter. It shows on the I'm main menu of Robin teleporting in. in. I know, it doesn't matter. I love his outfit, by the way. I think that a combination of him with this outfit and a little bit more serious of an attitude, he'd be up there with one of my favorite ty types of Robin, you know? You gotta be careful there, you almost said a slur. <laughs> what slur? You tried to say types, it almost sounded like you said the Kanye word for Jewish people. Oh no, I'm, uh, unlike a lot of people, I am not racist. That's so. good, that's good, I'm glad to hear uh, it. I actually care a lot about different uh, types of people. Why are you consulting world? a notepad? <laughs> Why are you consulting a notepad? It says, say this. And I think that black people are great. Great. Okay, good, good, good. Great. Good, me too. Glad to hear it. <laughs> I intercepted a rather urgent call from Star Labs. This seems different from the usual nighttime disturbance. They do some pretty dangerous stuff there. I'll head over and take a look. Okay, so Star Labs... It's sick-touching anus rubs. That's what it is, actually. 
Star Labs is the one that is from The Flash. We were recording at 5 or 6 a.m., and I think I said it was Star City Labs because that said that was on a, a building. Oh, yeah. Didn't that other person get mad at you for that, too? Like, Pussy Eater 9567 or whatever? <laughs> Uh, I highly doubt that there's any of that going on with someone like that, but yes. Yeah, but that's why they name themselves that, because it's overcompensation. It's like when guys... I wouldn't know about that. It's like with guys who have really small, you know, pee-pee areas, like, say that they're, like, eight inches. Yeah. That's not small. You take that back. No, but they're lying, is what I'm trying to say. Four inches is plenty. What? You tell everybody four inches is plenty. You are literally six No, five. I don't want to talk about that. If that could tell anyone about your size. I... I don't want to talk about that. I don't think you're one to talk about small. Wow. What? Does mean you say I'm small? I'm... No. I'm, wow. I'm saying you're a big boy in all parts of your body. Not true. Even your tum tum. I pride myself on having a tiny wee wee. What the heck? It's my favorite part about myself. It makes me more aerodynamic. What in the world? Also, we will go back to... I'm having a hard time here. We will go back to co-op. The only reason we're doing this is we have our TV downstairs because we were watching James Bond movies, and I really didn't feel like lugging it back upstairs. Yeah, because we we switch the um, 1080p, t, 1080p TV cool. down there to play COD Blackout because we were going to make a video on that. And then we decided, oh, uh, we want to watch James Bond, but we want to watch it on a 4K TV. So then we left the 1080p TV on the floor down there and then put the 4K TV where the other TV was. So now there's two TVs in the basement and only one TV up here. <laughs> yeah, well, one of those TVs is trash, and I've had it since, like, 2013. Yeah, not a great TV, but uh, it, you know, gets its use on, like, games that aren't super high quality. Sorry, I'm not very good with Tim yet, which is weird because, like, you'd think they'd all play the same, and they sort of do. But I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting used to him because I've never really done much as him. I'd argue Jason plays a lot different than Barbara from what I played as because you do a lot more of, like, pressing Y and doing gun stuff with him. Um, whereas Barbara does a lot more acrobat stuff. And Tim seems to do more acrobat stuff um, as well as, like, using his stick. And it kind of seems like he might also be reliant on pressing Y to do, like, batarangs or something, but I'm not sure what his ranged or attack is. Or orangs or whatever, but yeah. Wait, what? What, what orangs? Sometimes they're called bird orangs. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. I believe they were called that in Arkham. I think they wrote that out as the thing. So, um, I've always wondered, because, like, I'm not, like, the biggest expert on uh, Batman lore, even though he's one of my favorites. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> why did Batman decide to have his son sidekick be named Robin. Like, uh, after a bird. Well, there's been a lot of origins for Robin, so I guess it would... Oh, jeez. That was bad. That's Sorry. okay. Just try again. The, these big guys are actually really... They take a lot of hits. They're really hard to beat on your own. Well, they take a lot of hits. It's just kind of a quite a bit. Last oh, what time... what happened to my cape? Oh, What Lord. in the world? I wish they'd fix that, because this is the best outfit in the game for him, and they fuck up his cape all the time. It's, like, really bad. There yeah. we go. It, like, it flies over his head when he, like, crouches on the gargoyles and stuff. It's really bad. I think I maybe need to do some stealth with him. Also, I think this might be one of those art class things. I was looking at this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I found one I of those when for. I was playing um, the other day, because we... I decided to replay the Harley mission on my own to see what it would be like to play on my own, because I thought it would be cool to not only try and get some screenshots for the Let's Play, mm -hmm. um, but also I thought it would be just kind of fun to do. Mm -hmm. And it was so hard to do on my own. Like, it was really hard, especially mm -hmm. with, like, the big booby lady. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I was going to tell you, by the way, before we talk more about the other thing, that... <clears throat> I don't want to sound like an asshole here, so, like, I don't want this to come off like I don't like gay characters. Because I think some people took it that way, like, back when we originally talked about Robin. I thought you were homophobe. 
Okay, well, like, I don't, I just said I don't want to talk about it. I didn't say I'm not, I said I don't want it to come off that way. Well, I married you because you were a homophobe. That because, makes sense. Because I thought, like, opposites attract. You were like, oh, this is fun. Yeah, I thought it would be fun. Fun for, little trivia, for trivia night. I thought it would be fun for me to be gay and for you to be homophobic and for us to be together. Then when on card, er, in Cards Against Humanity, when it comes up, like, what's the best way to attack minorities? I, I, I can answer. And you can be like, oh, thank God we get those points. <laughs> but, like, before you were worried you would not get the points, right? Yeah, of course. Let's just make sure to keep... Uh, I actually, this. I get extra points for being diverse. That's nice. But being white uh, negates all of those. That pig mask, by the way, is so disgusting looking. It reminds me of uh, that pig guy who, like, serial killed in Arkham Knight. Oh, yeah, Pro Professor Pig. Yeah. I think he debuted in Detective Comics 666, by the way. Wow, really? Kind of like the devil's number. That's thing. horrific. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I think they just did it to be creepy, but... I think it's fun. I was going to tell you that with Tim, for me, I genuinely just think splitting him up with Steph and ending that entire relationship and moving him on to Bernard, who I hate. I hate that character so much. He feels so much like a self-insert. Yeah, like, I don't like him at all. I think he's really badly and, written. And you know what? The other day, no, I'm not kidding. The other day, I was like, you know what? Maybe I was just being hard on it. I'm a straight guy. Maybe I just don't like when they change something that I grew up with. Like, that's what I thought. I, I genuinely thought this to myself. I was like, mm. maybe I'm just being hard on it. I don't understand... You know, the intricacies of being gay, because I'm not. And maybe for me, like, maybe I just didn't understand. But you do have a degree in um, knowing what good writing is. In literature? Yes. I guess, but, like, that's there's also some subjectivity to that, too. I suppose, yes. But, like, so, you know, I was kind of like, well, okay, I tried to do the stealth takedown, and it just threw the thing. That's okay. Um, I was like, you know what, maybe I'm just being harsh on the character because it's a, a big change and I'm not gay and maybe the, maybe the writing's not actually that bad. Maybe it was just bad for a story. Well, I went to read another story and I, I would have, I'm not remembering what the issue was off the top of my head, but I was reading a few issues of Batman and Detective Comics and some other stuff. It was more recent and it was um, like this whole thing with Steph, I believe, meeting Bernard. And she, like, was like, I love you so much. I'm so glad you make Tim happy and all this stuff. And it felt so much like the writers were trying to make Steph approve of Tim Drake's relationship with Bernard so that the readers would. You know what really? I mean? And to me, it was so weird because it's like, dude, you... Like, I get they can be friends, but you would not drag your ex to go meet your new love interest when you're like, I just came out as bisexual. Right? Because wouldn't that? Because like most of the time, when you come out as bisexual after you date someone of the opposite sex, mm -hmm. the joke has always been, and maybe it's mean that this is a joke, but it has always been a joke, is that oh that person realized they were gay because or on the LGBTQ spectrum because they yeah. didn't enjoy your relationship that much. Yeah, that's always been the joke. So like with people, and even in the LGBTQ community, that's a joke to mm -hmm. them. Uh, you people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, why are we acting like you would just drag your ex to go meet this new person and they would be so overjoyed they would hug them out of glee? And also, again, Bernard, it's weird. uninteresting. He had nothing interesting to say, nothing interesting to do. He just kind of sits there. He doesn't do that much. Also, most normal people would feel at least one small twinge of jealousy and upset at a fresh breakup of somebody you really cared about and then meeting the new person that they're immediately with. Yeah, and then add on to that the, you know, layers of complexity of it now being a, you know, bisexual relationship. Yeah. And you now have, like, more layers of, like, confusion, right? Well, I don't understand why Tim can't be bisexual, but be with Stephanie. Well, you, you yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that is a question. I, I stuff here. Because, like... How do I get to it? There, oh. there is plenty of bisexual characters in media who... Recognized. Oh, I guess Wait. not. Look. That's cool. Secret cash. That's cool. Reach each of the emitters within the time limit to unlock the cash. Is that only for Robin? I don't know. Where's the emitters? I don't know. Oh, right there. That blue thing right in front of you. Oh, I'm just dumb. Um, uh, I don't think... I guess not technically in media, but in real life, there's a lot of bisexual people who, you know are with somebody of the opposite sex. Like, that's just kind of a normal thing, is, like, they're attracted to both. Yeah, you. 
Yeah, exactly. So it's like, just because he kind of realized he's bisexual doesn't mean he necessarily had to end his relationship. I mean, some people do. Well, I don't think... I, I think the relationship ended right before that, but I, I'm pretty sure the goal of ending it was this. You know what I mean? It just kind of seems like bad writing and upsetting writing. It's like... I, I think it's also upsetting that in this game, like, <clears throat> have you noticed he hasn't gotten any emails or anything, like, referencing Stephanie at all? Or at least I don't think he has. But I, like, I'm going to check just because I don't know if that changed, but, like, maybe. Harley Quinn got big plans. Hiya, baby bats. That party at Blackgate was a lot of fun. I'd have to stick... I'd have stuck around, but I couldn't miss that three for one at Taco's Dirty. Anyway, now that Batsy's gone, we'll have so much fun. Um... Uh, we'll read some of this, but um, that's Bart Allen. That's uh, mm -hmm. Flash, mm -hmm. or one of the Flashes. To all from Batman, if you receive this message, then people have started linking the words Bruce Wayne and Batman online. Interesting. Interesting. Which means my identity might have been compromised. But but yeah, have you noticed they don't mention um, they don't mention uh, Stephanie at all in these messages? But like. For the messages for other people, you see mentions of Wonder Woman and Starfire and Black Canary and other characters. Mm -hmm. But, like, they don't mention any of the characters who are tied directly with Tim. Well, I guess for me, one of my biggest problems is that I think both of the prominent male, male relationships in DC right now are just bad. And there was already one in Midnighter and Apollo that was interesting, but they just um, refused to... I guess I'm a little confused here. Oh, oh, uh, wait, so it's that over there? I here. guess so. Sorry. Um, in Midnight and Apollo, and they refused to ever market or do anything with those characters, so it just never went anywhere. But like, Yeah, them, because they thought that gay people wouldn't sell. Right, but even now they won't reference them or do anything with them, but they will with these two. Yeah, know, because with... they're secretly homophobic. The only reason that they're having him be gay is because somebody at the writing place decided that they wanted to have um, hey, diversity, Alfred. but also because... Cash that I, guess Bruce squirreled away out in the city. I didn't click that. Pretty neat stuff was inside. You know, Master Bruce was fond of having a backup plan. The supplies in those compartments often saved him a long trip back to the Bat Cave. I expect if you look hard enough, you'll find similar caches across Gotham. Cool. I'll keep my eyes open for more. But also because it's the same thing as, well, we don't think a Val Zod would sell, so we're going to have Black Superman. Well, Black Clark. Black Clark. Clark, yes. Clark. Black Clark. Clark. That's what I'm trying to say is, like, they think, like, it's, like, a really, like, racist and sometimes homophobic way of thinking of, like, this character, because they're diverse, couldn't possibly do well as a new character, so we have to change an already good-selling character so that way we can get sales on them. Because people will buy Superman, but they won't buy some random character that's black. It's so dumb. If, if that's the reasoning, that's so dumb to me because, like, one of my favorite characters in the DCAU is Jon Stewart. He is a black man. He is Green Lantern. He is my favorite Green Lantern by far. He's also Nate's favorite, he isn't is, he? Yes, he's one of the most complex DC characters that I can think of, but like they refuse to do much with him in a lot of continuities, and I, I just, I find it sad. But yeah, no, I mean, to me, people don't respect my opinion on this because I'm white and because I'm straight. I know you're bi, but I'm not. People obviously don't respect my opinion on it either. Because, like, a lot of people in the comments, like, acted like my sexuality didn't matter on those videos. Well, they also assumed that I was talking for you because you can't have a voice. I guess so, because I'm a woman, I guess. So you're misogynistic, too. Well, I don't like being outed for all these things. I'd like to come out about them in my own time. No, I'm not talking about you. I meant, like, oh, the people sorry. in those comments. Oh, right, right. No, yeah, I'm not misogynistic. Of course, yeah, not so, me. Of course, not yeah. Not me. I never would be. I like his, like, little, uh spinny thing he just did like a little cheerleader it's cool yeah this isn't bane by the way this is jane don't don't confuse them oh okay sorry nice i gotta help you be frotting did you see that on the wall what is it, that like ubisoft's like uh, more it says you be frotting you be frotting is actually the more like down to earth like inner city ubisoft you be hard 
you'd be hard. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, by the way, I'm only doing this so that I can get the premeditated crimes. And then we'd like to do some main stories, right? Yeah, and I'd also like to eat dinner. I'm we hungry. We were talking about stuff. No, I agree, and I think that to me, oh, oh, a Batman thing, to me, when you make a character, um, when you change something like that, a lot of times to me it comes off as tokenization. I guess it doesn't yeah, it to a lot of people, so fine. I mean, they could have they could have done Tim Drake in a way where they could have made him gay for some reason. They could have written it well. It could have still been upsetting to people, but they could have written it well, and they could have made it not tokenized. But Bernard is literally a tokenization of a stereotypical gay, and it's offensive. Well, you know what's weird to me is that the only people I really see defend the writing change are people who either are gay or people who are very, very um, politically opinionated in one direction. And, oh, we all know which direction that is. And I don't really necessarily think that's very, um, I don't know, non-biased. Like, so, like, if for me, like, imagine tomorrow, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of, like, just a straight-up gay character that's always been gay. Because a lot of gay characters didn't used to be, and then they became turned, mm -hmm. like, by writers into being gay. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to think of a character who has just always been gay in literature. But I mean, like, a difference with, like, Harley Quinn, who wasn't always gay, is they wrote it well. Well, I also think that she had subtext of of those kinds of things, like, in her writing. Like, yeah, dude, she always kind of was a little bit fruity. <laughs> You know, that's what they call it. That's what they call it. They call it a little bit flamboyant, a little bit fruity, like a little. You kind of have a little bit of the gay in you, you know. Like it's a, it's a gaydar. You know, okay. do you know what a gaydar is? Well, if I said any of this, people would get mad at me. Yeah, well, you know what? People can get mad at me all they fucking want. Um, but with with Harley, there was a lot of subtext in her character. Like, for example, the episode Harley and Ivy of BTAS, literally, is her and Harley or her and Ivy hanging out without pants on. In the yeah. same house. Yeah. Like, just chilling. Like, and people are like, well, it's just because they're friends. It's like, eh. That's kind of like when, um, back in the olden days, when, like, two men lived together for a really long time and never had children or anything. And they're like, yeah, these guys were just best friends till the end of their lives. They didn't live together for any other reason other than they were best friends. And, yeah, it's possible, but, like, if they were just hanging out with all their clothes off and, like... You Sleeping know, in the same bed. And when you came over, like, they'd both answer the door sweaty. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden there's, like, some contextual clues here, which make it seem like maybe there's a little bit going on. I mean, also, it's, like, kind of weird, too, for, like, a lot of people back in history during that time where you were, like, very much so pushed to have a family and stuff to live with, like, another man or be a woman who lived with another woman and never have a family or anything or get married and stuff. That's, like, very obviously a this person's just having a relationship with a, the same sex and people don't want to talk about it. Right, and my, you know? po my point with with um, Harley is I think there was subtext there. I think with Catwoman there was less, but I still think that over the years there was subtext because she was flirtatious with other women. And I never ever got that from Tim Drake and most people I talk to haven't. Like out of all of my friends and most of the people who follow me, I'm talking most of the 100,000 people who follow me, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that numbers always make you right. Mm -hmm. I have seen very few people, though, who follow our channel or any of our channels who can present a actual reasoned out, well, here's why it makes sense. Like, yeah, it just, it doesn't. Like You have so much history of the character and... And you just change it. And you know what? Like, there's places where people were willing to just accept that and not care. Like, for example, I don't care that they changed Alan Scott to be gay. You won't get a chance to plant the files. Um, you, Time to get sneaky. One of the original Green Lanterns. Like, I, I don't really care that much because, like, he was a character who I would argue hadn't been used that much for a very, very long time. And reinventing him was, like not really that big of a deal. Whereas you know I mean? when they reinvented Robin, it was just for soap opera shit. That's what it came off like to me. I see what I have to do. Um, and also, I kind of felt like personally, I mean, some people might disagree <laughs> with this. Yeah, Look, see, that keeps happening. Stealth mode. They need to fix that. <laughs> um, I Bernard, kinda, check out my new scarf. <laughs> I always felt like this personally, but like I know 
feel like I'm in a spot. It's not important. I know other people wouldn't oh, agree with me. I always felt like Nightwing was the more um, flamboyant one of all of the Bat family. I always felt like if they were going to make someone in the Bat family gay, it would either be him or Barbara. I also think it's really offensive, too, that as soon as Robin came out as gay, they started making him a lot more feminine and metrosexual. And giving him merchandise. Like, they gave him the rainbow Funko Pop, remember? Like, yeah. He came but, out as gay just in time for DC Pride. But, like, they didn't do any of that stuff with him beforehand. You know? Like, they obviously just kind of did that for merch and for a stereotype. Like, you also, not to, to be a dick here, but, like, you can have a masculine man be gay. There's plenty of masculine men who are gay. Yeah, like, a I, lot of them. I actually think, um, well, one of the main characters in Doom Patrol, it was actually a change for the show, and I don't mind the change at all. He's gay, and he's pretty masculine. And there's also feminine men who are straight. Like, we have a neighbor who I would have placed as kind of gay, actually, when I first met him, who's, you know, kind of a very feminine, well-kept, well clean, fam flamboyant kind of guy, and he's with a woman, you know? And he's happily married. Yeah, with, until I get my hands on With him. a woman. And it's like, it's not that weird for people to be different. Like, just... <gasps> Just because you have a sexuality doesn't mean you have to fit in a tiny box. And that is something that always bothered me growing up, especially when I was a teenager and I was trying to figure myself out. Nice tits, by the way, here. Because <laughs> I didn't, I, I had a hard time understanding the whole bisexual thing with myself because a lot of people would always just kind of be like, you have to choose one. Yeah. You can't like both. You have to choose one. You Pick a side. It's civil war. You either got to be gay or you got to be straight. Pick one. And I had a hard time choosing, obviously. Um, and so like for a long time I kind of felt Let like me out. I kind of felt like I was stuck in a box and I felt confused. <sighs> These characters, man, they are not fun to fight and I don't understand how to fight them. Yeah. I tried to grapple away to kind of come back. I'm sorry. But like when there's one of these like massively body positive characters <laughs> who like has Lizzo playlists on repeat and gets oh, angry no. if you look the wrong way. Oh no. Like you just can't possibly fight them a one on one. It's almost like that character I, maybe I'm wrong, but to me, it comes off like that character is designed... For multiplayer? For multiplayer. Yeah. I mean, basically what I'm trying to get at is as somebody who's felt like I was trapped in a box my whole life and finally just now, like, as an adult, decided, like, hey, I don't have to be like that anymore. I don't have to be a fucking stereotype. I can just be me mm -hmm. and who I am. Like the Taylor Swift song, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of other people I've noticed, especially online, have kind of gotten to that point in their lives too that are my age that have realized, you know, I don't need to be a stereotype. I can be whoever I want to be. And I think that's a really beautiful thing and it just makes me mad that a lot of these I guess media writers and like merch developers I guess, kind of think that you have to have a stereotype in order for it to sell when people don't want that or at least i don't think people want that people want you know somebody realistic somebody like them mm -hmm. you know somebody who is a dynamic character isn't just their sexuality isn't just one thing isn't just a stereotypical you know caricature mm -hmm. of something you know because it was offensive back in the day when they made caricatures of of black people so why isn't it offensive now when they do that for gay people well, because, like, I think gay people will take what they can get because they don't get much. But they, I, which is ridiculous. And I understand that, but, like, I think that there's a lot of potential for, like, a gay superhero. Like, I think that one thing that really um, I found interesting was Kevin Conroy. I was reading one of his things. I never knew the man was gay, ever. Which is fine. He, yeah. he like, nobody cares that, well, I guess. I I'm guess, sure somebody I does. guess homophobes would care, but, like, majority of people in our social circles, like, especially you, don't care that he's gay, you know, right. like, it's not a big deal. Jill, are you going to let me talk to? Yes. But with that, he had a story about how, like, in order to play Batman, he was kind of pitched this character who, like, hides a big part of who he is and doesn't know how to share that with the world and, you know, feels like he has a lot to make up for and do. And he kind of channeled some of that in his own life from his own feelings about himself mm -hmm. into the character. And I thought it was very fascinating. And imagine, like, not just someone channeling that into a character, but just a character being that way. Like, you don't, you don't only have the secret identity in terms of, like, who you are. You also have the coming to grips with who you are 
in just everyday life element. I was trying to see if I could lose them for... Yeah, those are those are real-life concepts. You know, those are something that a lot of people can get behind, whether you're gay, you're straight, you're black, you're white, you know? those are, That's something that's actually really interesting and has a lot of depth to it. Mm-hmm. No, I, I agree, and I, I just think it's weird to me that, like, that idea can't be explored with any new characters. It only has to be explored with established characters. And here's here's the real reason why. Again, it's what you said about, like, um, Black Clark Kent. It's, we can't make a black character and sell it. We have to just make someone black, because who wants a black character? That's what the reasoning is. Like Pretty much. So basically, it's easier to... It's much easier... Did this end? Oh, no. I did want to mention, though, real quick, that's a really racist concept because Marvel put out Black Panther, and that was an extremely successful movie. Right. And that character was always black. Yeah. I mean, I don't exactly love one of the dudes who worked on that, but yeah, like, it's it's still a good movie, and I still think that, like, it um, shows that, like, you don't have to, like, change everything to make that character work. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of... Okay, oh jeez. In terms of like when it comes down to it, like the idea is if we change, like, so let's say, let's say I go into DC editorial and I pitch something to them, right? And I, my head buds are fall, earbuds are falling out and I'm gonna lose if they do. Um, I have to hear the audio cues for her hits. If I go up to DC editorial and I'm like, hey, I have this idea for a character who is like a homeless superhero and he fights crime and he does this, that, and the other thing. Okay, well, I'm gonna have a harder time pitching that to them than, hey guys, what about a storyline where Bruce Wayne is homeless? Yeah. I'm gonna have a harder time p pitching that to them. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because they're gonna be like, oh, people will buy Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. They'll just buy that automatically. And the fact that you made him homeless just changes it. Mm -hmm. It just adds spice to Bruce Wayne. Let's sell that. Yeah, we just want a little bit of a soap opera. We want a little something different. You know, we want a we want a little bit of a you know, a little bit of a general hospital. I don't think like I can do these premeditated crimes on my own. No, oh, they're really hard. They were a lot easier when we were like low level. It says failed officers under attack. So like I failed this one. You failure, you. You should feel bad about yourself. You probably failed because you didn't channel your inner um, bisexuality. I'm sure that was it. But you get what I'm saying. No, I don't, actually. You don't get what I'm saying. No, I do. I get what you're saying. Okay, I'm just fuck joking. off. <laughs> I'm going to talk over you, you stupid minority. What the world? I'm saying because you're bi. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm going to talk over and you And because I'm a woman. That's exactly. Too. Don't women count as minorities still? Or In no? this house, they certainly do. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Do I have to cut out stupid minority? <laughs> no, I we... thought it was funny. Okay, well... I'm that's, hungry. That's kind of what it comes off as, like, in terms of, like, these editorial things, though, yeah. to me. Can we eat chicken? Well, let's go eat chicken.